Good morning, Philadelphia Eagles fans, and good morning, NFL fans, to week 10 of the 2016 NFL season down here in Center City, Philadelphia. And this week, I'd like to share with you my thoughts. How do I start? Because <laughs> this week, I, I don't want to do a full recap of last week for obvious reasons, but I, what I really do want to share with you is my mentality and, and how my week has gone. And I will just start with there. Last week, my Philadelphia Eagles lost to the New York Giants, 28 to 23. There's some things to communicate about during the game, but I think I'm going to cover that with what follows. <laughs> On Monday, I had work, and people said to me that I seemed a little bit more cheerful than normal after an Eagles loss, and they wondered why. And I'll be honest with you, I had to tell them. I think my mentality's changed a little bit. I think I'm looking at my football team a little different. Am I not bleeding green anymore? That, <laughs> that's never gonna happen. But let me share with you what I'm thinking. <laughs> I think I finally realized that the Philadelphia Eagles, our Philadelphia Eagles, my Philadelphia Eagles, it's a business. That's the reality. It's a business. It's a business that requires mental and physical strength. It's a business made to make money and to entertain. And putting that in perspective, I start looking at the Philadelphia Eagles football business more so like a business. And like any business, it will have its pluses and minuses, its ups and downs, and it will compete in a field of other people that are doing the exact same thing. Like restaurants down here. Restaurants are just a business. They also compete for your dollars. That hopefully you choose them to enter in and they take care of you and you come back. But what's interesting about football and about our team, yeah, like the Eagles are supposed to represent Philadelphia. Not just here, but everywhere we go. And we wear stuff on us all the time that represent that. We support our city and our team. Our team is comprised of many people that are coming from different locations. Carson Wentz coming from North Dakota. Um, Benny Logan from LSU. Uh, Michael Kendrick from Cal. Brian Selleck from Cincinnati. Uh, you name it. And the idea with football is that you take older people like a Doug Peterson or whoever and owners like Jeffrey Lurie and they have the finances and the, the mental strategies in order to communicate that information to younger people like Carson Wentz and Doyle Green Beckham and, and Malcolm Jenkins and then you bridge that gap of generations and come up with a plan to win like in business. But about football, you have a specific time every single week where that business plan and that idea is put on center stage against other businesses and you find out who has the best business. I think one thing that frustrates or has frustrated me in the past is that I don't think that we have the greatest of plans sometimes and we take some of the resources that we have and we don't do the most with them. We have certain employees, we'll call them, on our team that aren't putting it all in because let's be real about it. In the NFL, the talent pool isn't that far off from each other. There's only a few people that you're like, wow, they're really different than 
the average player. Like you, you take a burner like like Deshaun Jackson or somebody like Antonio Brown or Larry Fitzgerald or something. Take a quarterback like a Tom Brady. Um, we'll throw in Peyton Manning. Stuff. You'll take a coach like uh, Brian Bilicek uh, and the Kraft family owners. And yeah, these these people have talents and skills that are different. But then you have other teams that have the potential of gelling as a team and still being able to win. I got frustrated last week's game because there's a lot of different things and different aspects about the business I don't like. <laughs> that I saw was an obvious gap that we need to close and resolve so we, we're not insane fans like we keep doing the same thing every week and expecting a different result which is the Super Bowl and it just still doesn't happen it doesn't happen year after year after year it frustrated me seeing Trex burn down the field and we threw it up to him I think only twice in the entire game it worked one of the times so now it's a big game for us early picks frustrate me but I still want Carson Wentz to just keep going for what I really do it frustrates me watching Doyle Green Beckham play because it looks like his heart's not in it. <sighs> Jalen Watkins doesn't look like he's getting the correct coaching for whatever reason. I mean, he's been here for a little bit. Some coaching changes, I get it. But he was kind of responsible for how things went in the beginning. And now we're just using Darren Spoles. It's frustrating seeing uh, talent on the bench for whatever reason. Ryan Matthews is not being used. Is it injury or is it trust issues with ball control or can he just not get the job done? And so we're now using Darren Sproles and are we going to burn him out? We saw decision making. That, yeah, I like aggressive decision making. I would be lying to say I wasn't one of the people saying just go for it on fourth down that first time. And then when we finally did go for a field goal later in the game, we got it blocked. Arr. But I'm also looking <laughs> at how far under the cap we are and the decisions we made not to trade for anybody. I'm looking at the full picture of what our Philadelphia football business is doing. And right now, we are not taking steps towards success. Because I remember not too long ago when Jeffrey Lowy even said, we're the gold standard of football. But when we get compared every week against other businesses doing the same thing and we don't win, and we don't win the final test <laughs> that proves that you are the best, we can't be the gold standard. Every week I come out and I'm going to continue doing it and talking about what happened on the field or decisions made, but looking at it from a business aspect, we can choose to change our plan or not. And depending on if we choose to change our plan, uh, we'll determine if we give ourselves a better opportunity to be successful going forward. So that being said, I'm not just going to kill the players. Some, the, some of the players absolutely own what's going on. I'm going to tell you. Aguilar absolutely owned his comments and dropping more passes like he did last week. He owns it. Doyle Green Beckham giving half effort. You can see it a mile away. Own that. Do I believe Ryan Matthews uh, puts his heart in when he plays? I do. I really do. Do I love it when we have uh, Vinny Curry from Philadelphia playing on the team? Yeah, because I think he, he adds something a little extra little edge because he's known what it's been like to be on that losing side or do we also love people like Connor Baldwin that's come here from somewhere else but's made Philadelphia home yeah but can I kill a Carson Wentz how much how much play calling responsibilities has has he been given what kind of leeway has he been given what kind of trust do they have in him to call the play from from the huddle but also what are we doing with our coaching staff is it appropriate, is it right, if it's not working, to have Greg Lewis being our wide receivers coach? Yeah, I understand. He played on our team. He was actually the last person to catch a touchdown in the Super Bowl for us. I think that was Super Bowl 39. 
But is he getting the job done as the wide receivers coach? Is Deuce Staley getting what needs to be done in running backs? Is Doug Peterson? No, this is still early for Doug, and I get it. And I understand. I think I understand what Jeffrey Lurie is trying to do. And trying to build a family of people that he can bring back that have have risen up in the Philadelphia organization. I mean, you, if you walk around the Novicare complex, and I've done that before, I mean, you'll see a Harold Carmichael walk by. You know Brian Dawkins got re-signed for whatever influence he's going to have on the team. You see Greg Lewis and Deuce Staley, and you, you see these people that, yeah, they come from other places and now are invested in Philadelphia and are building and growing their careers here, and I think that's great. But we also have another responsibility to be successful in what we do, not just to hire and say, oh, we have, what we have and we use for success. Because I'll be honest, I, I, I spend my time and I spend my money, Philadelphia Eagles gear, <laughs> making videos, and that's my choice. But I want, I want to be proud of this company and I, I, want to, I want the Eagles to do something different. I want them to bring in consultants they need to, need to bring in mentors, or bring in the people that are necessary for us to win. And not to stay stubborn in a mindset that has us with predictable results. And what's starting to happen is we're having predictable results that are causing us to lose. I will always be an Eagles fan until the day that I die. I'm all in with this city and everything about it, which means my Eagles, Sixers, Flyers, Phillies, that's for sports, for the businesses, for the people, and for the opportunity, and what I believe this city really stands for. But I'm gonna close on this. Yes, I'm a diehard Eagles fan, and this is what I do at 2.45 in the morning sometimes. But instead of getting really frustrated <laughs> and frustrated to the point where I'm you know, throwing my jacket on the floor, maybe scare my kids a little bit because I'm yelling at the TV, I'm gonna step back a little bit and gain a different perspective. My Philadelphia Eagles play and represent my city on the football field and hopefully entertain and bring a couple aspects to business that I like and I enjoy and I learn from. But I no longer am gonna take as much offense to how the Philadelphia Eagles business is run because I believe there are some aspects that still need to be taken care of the way that I think they need to be taken care of in a business that will represent my city in its totality. And with that being said, if I truly believe that and I don't have the power to change the Philadelphia Eagles per se, then I think it's my responsibility to run my own Philadelphia business. And I sat and thought about that and I said, you know what, that makes sense and that's not insane. So yes, I can be a nutcase Eagles fan. This week we're inviting the Atlanta Falcons. I think they're six and three right now. And we know they're bringing in Julio Jones and Matt Ryan. And we're going to hear all about Matty Ice and how he's a local kid and Julio Jones and how he's tearing up the NFL. And we have to have a plan for it. Good morning. We have to have a plan for it, and I get it. But there's a bigger picture, and the bigger picture of this city and what Philadelphia needs to do moving forward. And I'm going to start looking at that as well. And it's time to use this same kind of passion for our schools and for education and for work programs and for entertainment and for faith. So yes, I'm looking forward to Eagles playing at one o'clock and to learn from our business and hopefully root us on so we can win and be happy when we do it. And if we don't, it's not the end of the world, but we gotta make changes and we'll talk about that in the future. But I think this is the start to a, to a change I know in my life. And I, I'm happy that there are some people I share with, and I'm looking forward to hearing your comments and again in your support, not just for the Eagles, but for Philadelphia. So my name is Will, 
I appreciate you watching this video. And I look forward to hearing from you in the future. Have a great day and go birds.